What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make power from your car for free. So behind me, I have my Nissan 370Z. It's got a naturally aspirated 3.7 liter V6. You obviously need air, fuel, and spark to make power in the car. Now, if you can add more air, you can make more power. So with that being said, right here I have the upper and lower intake manifold from a 3.7 liter VQ. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to get extra power from the stuff that you already have. So air is gonna come from your cold air intake or from your regular intake. It's gonna go through here on both sides because this is a dual throttle body car. Um, it's gonna go through the throttle body into the upper manifold, then down into the lower manifold, and then it's gonna go through the cylinder head and into the engine. So right here, I have the stock components. So you can see that we have the inlets on the side and the outlets here. And then from here, these here, these little six holes are the inlets. And then from the lower part of the manifold, these are the outlets that go to the cylinder head. This guy here is made out of plastic. This here is made out of aluminum. Now you can make both of these perform better with just simple hand tools that you have at home. So in a previous video, I showed you guys how to port and polish your engine, your cylinder head, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and you can use those exact same tools that you have to do the exact same thing here. Now, even if you don't have any of those fancy tools, you can use regular sandpaper to get the same thing done. So here is the plastic manifold that I have for the upper part. Now, if you guys can tell, this is actually made up of multiple different layers of plastic. So we have an upper one, a middle one here, and then a lower one. This all is fused together from the manufacturer, which means that if any of these are slightly off when they put this together and fuse it, you're not gonna exactly be getting a very nice smooth flow of air from the inlet to the outlet. The same kind of thing goes for this. So even though this is not plastic, there are still irregularities in the castings that are found inside the runners. So we're gonna be making everything just super smooth. Now you can obviously get into it and pour and polish all this stuff to make it all perform even better, but on the very safe side, what you can do is just smoothen it all out. So with a light through the inlet part of the manifold, you can see reflections coming through the outlets. So take a look at the, these little lines that are found here. So this is like the little pieces of plastic that are basically fused together. Now you can tell you see that like little lip? We're gonna remove that lip on every single one of these. So it doesn't matter if you have a plastic or an aluminum manifold, if you have any irregularities or imperfections that's gonna slow down the flow of air, that is losing power. So we're gonna be gaining that power back once we smoothen all this stuff out. I've seen some manifolds that are a lot worse than this, but still, we're gonna be able to get some extra power out of this. If you have the tools at home, it costs you nothing. But if you do need to buy the tools, it will cost you a little bit for the first initial purchase. Everything after that is gonna be free. So we're gonna get started with this guy here. So starting off with the upper manifold that's made out of plastic, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be refining the imperfections that are found in each of these six runners and also from the little inlets found on both sides. So what we're gonna be starting off with is using a drill with this long reach little barrel type thing and this here is a sanding roll. It's essentially a little piece of sandpaper that's rolled up. So you can get these sanding rolls um, online, I'll have a link for them in the description box. They'll come in either 120 grit or 220 grit sanding rolls. So I'm gonna be starting off with the more aggressive 120 and all that we're looking to do is remove these little lines. So take a look at this. It shouldn't be catching like that on these lines. So anywhere that you see that kind of imperfection, whether it be on the inside going this way or coming this way, you wanna remove that. Smooth is good, so we're gonna try and make everything inside of here as smooth as possible. If we have any sharp angles or sharp edges, we're going to try and remove those if we can. So all you have to do, grab your drill with this little attachment, put the little sanding roll through it, drill into it, so what's gonna happen is that you can see how this little part here is larger than this. So when you put this over top, it's gonna expand into the roll and it's gonna spin. So the more that you put pressure on this, the tighter it's gonna get on this shaft. So whenever you're ready, get started with cleaning these up. So after sanding this port here for literally about 20 seconds, you can see that there's already a pretty big difference between this ported one and then the standard one. So you can see that this is kind of shiny, but you can still see that there's a little lip there. So in this one here, that is where the little lip is, and this is a lot less noticeable. So with the sanding roll, if you still see a little bit of like regular black that isn't sanded, you want to shave that down because that right there, you can feel it is catching. 
you wanna bring your fingernail and rub it over any of these little areas going this way and this way. If you can make this as smooth as possible, you're gonna be freeing up some horsepower. So this is where this modification is gonna make you power for free. All that you're really spending is time to get this done. So I'm gonna put a little bit more time into this port and then show you what it's gonna look like afterwards. So that is looking a lot better. It's all pretty smooth-ish. Now the imperfections themselves are pretty much gone, but there's still like the rough little casting marks or whatever, the scratches from the little sanding roll. So we're gonna be switching from the 120 grit sandpaper to the 220 grit sandpaper. And these ones here are gonna be a little bit softer and these should remove all of these like heavier imperfections that are found in the plastic. So what we're gonna do now is smoothen this out to make this really nice. And this here will pretty much complete the process for the plastic polishing and porting. With both sanding stages for this port now complete, you can actually do this exact same thing to all of the other ports that we have right here that are going to the lower part of the intake manifold. Now you can also do the exact same thing to the inlet ports. The air from the intake is going to be going into here and then it's going to be dispersed into each and every one of the combustion chambers. But you can sand this down and smoothen it out. Once you do that, you're gonna have something that looks like this. So it's gonna be a lot smoother. You're not gonna have those hard lines or whatever anywhere inside of here. And it's gonna look something like this. So I'm gonna replicate this exact same thing to both inlets and then each one of these exit ports uh, for the intake manifold that's made out of plastic. If you wanna do the same kind of thing to an aluminum manifold, this is what you would do. If you guys have an aluminum intake manifold or if you have an aluminum part that you wanna port and polish, this is what you're gonna be getting rid of. See like the little marks that are found right here where the casting is? So these casting lines are imperfections. So we're gonna to wanna to remove all of them on each of these ports and smoothen all of this stuff out. Now you're not exactly looking for a pure mirror finish, but if you can just smoothen this stuff out, you're gonna be getting some power from this too. So remember how we were using this piece here? Well, we're going to use this again, but not exactly yet. So we're gonna take this out of our drill and to port this guy here, we're gonna be using some different bits. So these here are from previous projects. I was using these here to pour my cylinder head on my Mini Cooper. So I'm gonna be using these exact same things, this one right here along with these other four. You guys can take a closer look. I'm gonna be using these in addition to my drill and I'm gonna remove all of those heavy marks that are found in the aluminum. Considering this piece right here is made out of cast aluminum, so it means that liquid aluminum was poured into a mold, and this is the piece that we're left with. It was machined on top, machined on the bottom, and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna be able to go ahead and refine all of these castings that are found in here using this bit. Now, if you would like, you can use the sanding bits, but you're gonna be going through a lot of them to get the same result done. So, using your little bit, you're gonna be able to remove the marks that are on the side along with all the castings that are found in the runners. So I'm actually gonna use this bit on every square inch of the runner and then I'm gonna smoothen it down afterwards with these sanding rolls. So let's get started. Okay, so do you guys see that really heavy casting line that's found on the left? So that there is the stock casting line and after you go over it, with the milling bit or the carbide bit, you'll be able to see that it's a lot shinier. So you're gonna repeat this to each and every one of these ports until everything is looking super nice. So that there is stock, we're gonna be changing all that out. All of that is slowing your car down. So we're gonna remove all that, make it all look pretty, and I'll show you guys after this what it's gonna look like with it all complete. Okay, so I forgot how long it actually takes to get all of this porting and stuff done on aluminum. So the aluminum is gonna be a lot harder of a material to break down and actually shape versus the plastic stuff. So if you guys are doing this procedure, set aside multiple hours. I'm probably about three hours in already and I'm not even done. So I have uh, two ports shaved down, I have two ports sanded down with the 120 grit and I have two other ports sanded down with 220 grit. So let me show you what that looks like. So these two ports here are after just reshaping and removing the heavy casting marks. So you can see there is a really big difference. They do look a lot better and this is pretty much what you should be expecting if you put light through it. So you can see that there's a lot of reflections in there and this is going to be a lot better than stock. Now if we move next to these two ports here, these next ones have the same refinement done that was done here and then the 120 grit sanding stage was done. So this is a lot smoother than this. 
So you should be able to feel a really big difference between these two. And then once you jump down to the 220 grit, you should see even more of a difference. So take a look at this reflection here. This looks really good if you ask me. So even this alone, you'll be able to see some really good gains from. And you'll be able to hear a difference too when you're doing this. So I'm gonna bring the mic up to you guys so you guys can hear the difference between the carbide, 120, and then 220. Okay, so we're gonna start off here. It seems like every single one of these, like when you move up, gets like a little bit higher pitched of a noise. So we're gonna do the carbide for every single one of these ports, move on to 120 for all the ports, and then 220. So we're gonna be getting something pretty much like this after we're done. So this is probably gonna take about five hours in total for something this small. If you guys are doing like a really big project, like a cylinder head or an even bigger intake manifold, um, definitely put aside a decent amount of time to get that done. But you should be able to see some good gains afterwards. So with the upper and lower manifolds now pretty much ported, you'll be able to see not only is it smoother, but there's not gonna be as large of a difference. So like, let's say like a little bit of a lip down in there. So the lower manifold and the upper manifold, or actually the other way around, they're both together and you'll be able to see that there's a little bit of a lip down there. So you can see that the light is coming through the port. We'll have to actually sand down the upper manifold a little bit more so that we have a nice smooth transition between these two. The smoother of a transition that we're gonna have, the more power this setup is going to make. So we're gonna have to do this to each and every one of these ports. Now this part here is what pretty much takes the longest amount of time, but this is where you're gonna get those extra gains. So while we're here, while we're doing this, it takes a little bit of extra work to get this done, but the results should speak for themselves. So before I show you guys the final product, let me show you the products that we use. So this here is pretty much all the little sanding discs, or like the little rolls that we use. These larger ones are the 120s, and you can see we used four of the 220s. So you're gonna expect to go through that-ish, depending on how bad your manifold is. Um, as for the actual metal carbide bits, after going through all that aluminum, you can see that all the teeth are still perfectly fine. So I use this like little cone one looking one the most, but I also used every one of these in addition to this to get all the aluminum shaved down. And all the teeth on them are still holding up fine. So I have the long reach ones here. I have the short ones from a previous project, but I didn't exactly use them for this. So if you guys wanna get this done, I would say definitely purchase all of these um, along with you know a drill if you don't have one to get all of that done. Uh, this here is all the plastic that we removed from the upper manifold. And this here is all the aluminum that we removed from the lower manifold. So, with that being said, let me show you guys the final product. Seven hours later, these are the results that I have for the upper and lower manifolds. So I went ahead and used the carbide bits for both of them. Yes, both of them, including the plastic. I then went with a 120 grit sanding roll and then followed it up with a 220 grit sanding roll. And they look so much better than before. Now what I also did while I was doing this entire procedure was essentially gasket matching both of these components. So that means that I put this piece, which is the lower manifold, spun it on top of this and then I looked through the ports. What that did is it allowed me to see how much more material I needed to basically shave off. So this here is pretty much how the manifolds are going to sit in the car. Now I have a flashlight down on the other end and if you take a look at this, look at the two ports found right here. So can you see how they're pretty much smooth from the lower to the upper manifold. So that is really good. Those transitions mean that we're gonna be getting a nice amount of smooth air going from there to through here. And you can sit pretty much the exact same thing throughout. So it's really nice. If you have a light to help you guys out while you're doing this procedure, it's gonna make it so that you can be super precise. So I'm gonna take actually all of these apart. I'm gonna eventually work on the Z, take both of the manifolds off of the car, and then I'm gonna put them in, get them tuned, put some intakes on the car, headers, and then get the car going and see what it can dyno at. So right now, I'm running pretty much stock everything in the engine except for an exhaust system. I have these like little intake tubes here, but I don't really know if they do much. Um, dyno wise, I didn't really feel much, but I'm going to see a huge difference after I do everything intakes. So I'm gonna be replacing the intake box, the tube that's going to it, I'm not gonna be replacing the throttle body because these are already pretty good 60 millimeter throttle bodies. I've got one there and one there. And then once I take 
the engine cover off and then the two manifolds underneath that, I should be able to see a large difference after I get the car tuned. So if you don't tune the car, you'll probably get some good gains, but you'll notice the biggest amount of gains if you tune the car after you put these things in. So if you guys wanna do this exact same thing to your manifolds, you easily can do it. Now, I went ahead and purchased an extra pair of manifolds just so that I didn't have to have my car apart while I do this because if you still need to drive your car, it'll be out of commission for easily hours and hours. But if you wanna port and polish your manifolds, you can do that and make easy horsepower. So the more air that you can flow into your engine, the more power you'll make. So you're essentially trying to bump up the CFM rate of the manifolds to get more power. Ideally to make more power and you know, in an organized manner, you'd start from the back of the car and work your way forward. So exhaust would be first. So I'll probably be installing some headers on the Z before I get around to installing the intake stuff. But I'm gonna be doing headers because I have a cat back. Then I'm gonna be going with these upgraded manifolds and then I'm gonna be doing an intake system on the Z. So we should see a healthy power gain from doing all that stuff. I'm guessing about 50 wheel horsepower and then once you put a tune on top of that, it's gonna open it up even more and that's where you're gonna get the most amount of power after you do these mods. So after you do the hardware upgrade, you then need to do the software upgrades. But if you guys have any further questions regarding the video, you guys can put your comments down in the comment section. If you wanna find the parts, check the description box. I put a ton of information down there for you guys. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.